Hey everyone, in this video I will show you things that you might not known about energy generation in Genshin Impact. I will also teach you on how to count the energy you will get for your active characters and the team. Since, you know, active and inactive characters get different energy after all. Did you know that damaging enemies can generate energy? Yes, after damaging enemies until a certain HP threshold, it will drop energy particles or orbs. All of them also drop it upon defeat. For smaller enemies, they have one threshold at 60% HP. These smaller enemies are hilly turtles, semi turtles, and small slimes, and also chichin bats. For medium enemies, they have two threshold. First at 66% HP, and second at 33% HP. These enemies are large slime, geofishup, the fatuis, skinny treasure hoarders, and the eye of the storms. For the big enemies, they have three thresholds. First at 75% HP, second at 50% HP, and lastly at 25% HP. These enemies are Hypostasis, Regisfines, Ringard, Hunter, and Grader. Big Treasure Hoarders, Hooper Flower, Abyss Mage, Lava Churls, and also Mita Churls. Keep in mind that all of them can only drop energy from the HP threshold once. You can't just hit and run, then come back after they're recovered. These are also HP thresholds, not shield. Don't expect Abyss Mage to drop energy if you haven't broken their shield yet. Enemies who have the element in their name will drop the corresponding element particle. For example, Cryo Whooper Flower will drop Cryo Energy. Other than that, the enemies will drop non-element energy instead. Of course, there are exceptions here. Those enemies are Treasure Hoarder Potioneer, Fatui Chinchin Mage, and Fatui Agent. Let's get to know on how much energy it is per particle and orb. Here is the conversion table. Courtesy of Wikipedia, which is based on a Bilibili video, dated October 2020. This table shows on how much energy gain without accounting energy recharge. At base value, one particle worth 3 energy to the same element, 1 to different element, and 2 for non-element. An orb is worth 9 energy to the same element, 3 to different element, and 6 for the non-element. In short, the active or on-field character will always get full value and different elements will give less energy than the same or non-element energy drop. For the inactive characters, the energy gain will decrease according to how many people are in the party. For 2 people, the inactive will only get 80% energy value. For 3 people, it's 70% and for 4 people, it will be 60%. This conversion still applies to co-op. For two-man co-op, both players control two characters, which means that the 80% conversion applies to both. For three men, it applies only to you. And for four men, all players gain the full value since everyone controls only one character. Here is an example using Yanfei and Xiangling with no energy recharge addition. They both need 80 energy to cast elemental burst. I will only use Yanfei as the active characters. Based on the table, Yanfei should be able to cast Elemental Burst first since she got more energy per particle. There it is! Yanfei managed to get her burst before Xiangling. Now, if you notice, all of them have 100% energy recharge. Yes, in case you didn't know, energy recharge doesn't start at 0%. 
That means all energy recharge stats from weapon, artifact, and ascensions are additive. So, next time you have 200% energy recharge, that means you will get 100% more energy, not 200%. Keep that in mind, people. Lastly, here are some fun facts for you. Some weapons and artifacts can generate energy too. Non-element only though. The Scholar Artifact Set will give all bow and catalyst users in your party 3 energy per particle or orb gain every 3 seconds. The Exile Sets make elemental burst give other party members except the caster 2 energy per 2 seconds for 6 seconds. The Fafonius Weapon lineup can generate 6 energies when you scores a critical hit every set seconds. Currently, Xingqiu and Lissa become the only characters that can generate 5 particles at once per skill use. Xingqiu for the skill tap, and Lissa for the skill hold. But, if we are talking about who has the most energy generation potential, it will be either Tartaglia or Albedo. His skill can last up to 30 seconds and the energy generation is based on how much you can hit enemies during that time. You can also generate energy from a lightning strike. It will generate an electro particle. Well, that's all about energy generation for now. All links for the information used are in the description below. Feel free to comment if you have more insight or found any mistake in the video. Have a good day and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.